Hello and welcome to Motors for the Masses and today I want to talk to you about some rather interesting technology that's coming and has been here for a while. So let's roll the intro and get cracking. So first of all, e-turbos. What is an e-turbo? Well, it's something that's being used on bikes now instead of turbos or superchargers. And why are they better? Well, turbos cannot be used on demand, whereas e-turbos can be used to boost the engine with more power and torque when that performance boost is actually needed. And e-turbos can be easily mapped for certain riding modes and whatever gear you're in. Now this is something Honda has been playing with, with their V3 concept, and now Yamaha with their e-turbo concept. So is this the future? Is this what is required? So companies are now going to be using a lesser capacity engine and then boosting that power with an e-turbo so you're getting a much higher capacity engine performance by using a smaller capacity engine. I don't know. I mean, they do it with the um, the Kawasaki Hybrid, that with its very limited, or admittedly, uh, power boost that you can use, makes a 750cc engine performance for a short period of time from a 451cc engine with that hybrid technology built in. So is this the future? Is this where everyone's going? They're not going to be going to the electric market, maybe, because they are too expensive. I don't know, but I'll talk about more on that in a second with another new development that's coming. However, is the alternative to just keep using combustion engines, but a much smaller capacity engine, and then boosting it with an e-turbo to give the feel and performance of a much higher capacity engine. I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. Is this something that you think the future is going with and would be successful? Which then brings me on to a manufacturer that you wouldn't necessarily think would be making an EV, and that is General Motors. Yes, the company that is renowned for making big V8 muscle cars in America, they tinkered with it a while ago about making an EV concept two-wheeled powered bike or an e-bike. Well, now they're looking at making a motorbike. Now, Dodge with their Charger, <laughs> something the Duke boys would be rather disappointed in, I feel, have decided to go from a V8 to an electric engine. It's not even an engine, it's an electric motor. And then try to add the V8 sounds to it, albeit not very convincingly. Now, when I had the um, electronic exhaust system on my transit van, it actually sounded like a V8 because they take V8 sounds and put them into a soundboard and then match it with the revs through the, um, the CAN bus system. So it sounds like a V8. And everyone I met thought there was a V8 in that transit. However, with this new Dodge Charger, it's got a, a very synthesized, whew, like Jetsons sound. It just sounds awful. And when you hear it ride, or drive, or ride, drive up the road, it's It just sounds awful. And it's just not anything like a V8. And I don't know what they're doing with it. And I really don't think it's gonna sell brilliantly. It looks okay, a bit small, not very Dodge Charger-like considering they had the big 69 Dodge Charger and then in the 70s it was still big although with that weird back end very 70s like and then with the new Charger the four door that the police use um, big again and now they've got this small one which is like the 69 Charger ish on the front but a lot smaller it's kind of like Ford Escort to a Ford Granada kind of thing you know and I just don't think it works very well. And certainly with this weird EV sound, I don't think it works at all. But now GM are going to this two wheel thing. I don't know, I'm gonna have a look at it. What do you think? That does appear to be very futuristic, 
but at the same time a bit sort of Husqvarna it's got that weird sort of flat tank moves into flat scrambler-esque seat uh, and again in keeping with sort of modern scramblers and uh, modern sort of EV bikes are trying to look like and I think it does have that Husqvarna look to it and let's be honest that didn't work too well for Husqvarna I personally liked it the 401, well, the original 401 and the 701 with that flat tank and it looks like the uh, wings have been cut off the side of those little panels um, but I quite liked it however I don't know if it's going to work for them what do you think let me know in the comment section below and that brings me on to an old debate E5 versus E10 fuel what's it like in cars what's it like in bikes now it's been out for a while now and the debate, as I say, has been going on for quite a while. Personally, I would never put E10 in anything. I've got six cars and 11 motorbikes, and I've never put E10 in any of them. Never. Now, it's not too bad, technically, in a car, because you are constantly refilling the fuel, then using it. If you use the car regularly or daily, you are filling the tank up, and then you are using it and then you are refilling it and then using it. So fuel isn't really sitting around in the tank and that is where you get issues. Now in a bike, this is where it can cause problems because a lot of people who ride bikes tend to ride them during the summer months and then park them up during the winter and then fuel is sitting in the tank. And according to certain experts, it can fluff up carbs, it can block needles, it can cause rubbers to break down and gaskets to fail. And with the hydroscopic ethanol drawing in extra water vapour from the atmosphere, it can sit in a bike's tank and the water could float to the top, which means corrosion occurs. Now, as I say, in cars, with a constant use and refilling tanks weekly, etc., there isn't that much risk of corrosion, but with bikes, the water will sit to the top and corrode inside the tank. And also, if it sits in the pipes too long, it can break down the rubbers and gaskets, etc., and cause leaks and further issues. Now again, this is more likely to occur with bikes that have carburetors because it can mess up the carbs, cause needles to block, etc. And fuel injection systems, not so much of a risk, which is why you see a lot of bikes now that have E5 and E10 written on the tank. But I personally would never stick it in any bike. And there's another reason for that. Now it's very difficult to monitor how much emissions are released into the atmosphere using E5 and E10 fuel. In theory, it's supposed to be a reduction of around 2 to 3%, but it's difficult to monitor. And the reason why is that E5 fuel can have between 0 and 5% ethanol, whereas E10 fuel can have between 5.5 and 10% ethanol. And it depends when it's made, who it's made by, etc., and how it's produced. You don't know how much ethanol is actually in that fuel. So technically, you could be putting E10 fuel in and getting only 5.5% of ethanol. You could be using E5 fuel and get 0% ethanol. I personally would rather use E5 and take the risk of lower than the risk of getting up to 10% ethanol in my fuel. But because of that, it is really hard to gauge. Also, it is commonly known that E10 fuel burns quicker, so technically you're using more fuel when you're using E10, and your miles per gallon are actually less than if you used E5. So with that in mind, the more you fill up with E10, the more tax you're actually paying to the government. So you're giving the government more money by using E10 than you are by using E5. Now you could argue that if lots of people then started using E5, the government would just put the prices up of E5 to compensate for the loss of revenue from the tax. Who knows? They're uh, ruled unto themselves. We don't know how they work. We all know they tax far too much anyway. But for the actual consumer, is there much more advantage of using E10? I don't think there is. Because yes, okay, you're paying slightly less at the pumps, but you're filling up more regularly. So over the year, you're probably using exactly the same or maybe even a little bit more in E10 fuel than you would in E5 fuel. Let me know your thoughts on that. If you look at the wider world, E15 fuel is used in USA, Canada and Brazil, which has between 10% and 15% ethanol. And Brazil are even using E25 fuel, which is up to 25% ethanol. 
I would assume for regularly refueled vehicles, so it isn't sitting around too often. But you also have dual fuel vehicles like some Dacias, some Fiat's, some older Holden's, Ford's, Mazda's in Australia that can run on E85 fuel, which has up to 85% ethanol. Now, obviously, they are sort of, um, they call them flex fuel vehicles or dual fuel vehicles. So, you know, they're designed to run that way. But is that the future? Is dual fuel the future? Let me know. I'd, I'd say I'm interested to know what your thoughts are. The downside of that is that there are not many dual fuel outlets in the UK, certainly not as many as normal fuel outlets. So it's like hydrogen, you know, you're, you've got to search for where to fill up for that fuel. So overall, is E10 better to use or is E5 better to use? Personally, I would only ever use E5. The problem comes is when in 2021, they said E5 fuel will be available for at least the next five years, which takes us to 2026. There isn't anything at the moment that says it will stop or it will continue after 2026. I don't think it'll phase out because I don't think they can yet. However, they may tax it more. I don't know, we're yet to see what's going on with that. But I will certainly use E5 for as long as I can. And certainly in a motorbike, especially as a lot of my bikes, in fact, my newest bike now is uh, 2019 fuel injection, um, but it's based on older Honda technology, even though it's fuel injection, but I would probably only use E5. In fact, I would, I'd only use E5 in any of my bikes and any of my cars. It's not even up for question. Um, the, perhaps the alternative is E10, if E5 gets phased out, plus additives, but then it's going to make it more expensive. I don't know. It's Who knows where the future is in terms of fuel. Um, these e-fuels that they're talking about, uh, synthetic fuels, I don't know what damage they would cause. We don't know a huge amount about them at the moment, so we don't know the longevity of um, any damage if used over a long period of time. Where is the future going for fuel? Is it only going to be electric? I don't think so. I think fuel is here to stay. And I think um, synthetic fuels, once the hype and the uh, threat of, oh, you won't be able to use your bike after 2030 has uh, died down. Um, I think there is a future for E5 and there is a future for E10 plus additives and higher ethanol concentrate fuels as well. Who knows? Let me know your comments in the comment section below, please. And that's all I've got for this video. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Click the notification bell for more. And I've got a bike arriving soon that I shall have for a week that I can take out on test. That'll be quite interesting. So stay tuned for that. And that's all I've got. So until next time, please ride and drive carefully, but have fun. Bye bye.